There has been a lot of stillness here on Houdini. There is this pressure from society to be productive, as if we're not useful if we're not highly productive, always doing something. For me, this looks like constantly pushing myself restlessly to the next goal. I thought I fixed the generator, but I did not. Um, I pulled the cord out, so I've gotta go into town. I'm gonna take Poodle to go potty, and then I'm gonna come back and try to fix this rip cord. I feel like there's a song that should go with this. My car is a dinghy, and sometimes it's a big to-do to get to land. Luckily for Poodle and I, it's a beautiful day here in the La Cruz Anchorage. Okay, just dropped off my laundry. 71 pesos. I think that's $3 for a whole orange bag that you saw me put onto the dinghy. That is a fantastic price. I paid 50 bucks in Yalapa, insane. Yeah, so anyways, I am headed back over to the boat to drop off Poodle. I'm going into Vallarta. This is the first time that I'm leaving him alone in a long time, so hopefully he's good. Or hopefully he's not bad. <laughs> We lose sight in our society of just how important rest is. It's a time to reflect and a time to take stock of what's really important. Right now, for me, it's one sale, one project, and one day at a time. I am dressed and ready to go sailing. I'm gonna head back over to um, La Cruz and then hopefully be able to make it to Puerto Vallarta tonight by six. So it's a seven mile sail. There's just a breath of wind. So let's see if it's going in the right direction and get out of here. This boat was not really built to single hand. I'm trying to find the sweet spot for RPMs on this little girl. And I have to do it by ear because the gauge doesn't work. I have a 135 pound anchor hanging off the end of the bowsprit, which in hindsight was a poor choice. So I have to hoist mindfully until I can redesign. I decided to buy the monster anchor after getting caught in a 78 knot squall in the Bahamas. I thought this would be the perfect solution, but this anchor size requires a major bow redesign. Everything forward is really heavy, the anchor and the hardware on my bridle. Setting and pulling anchor takes me a lot of time with my current upper body strength. More push-ups. Goodbye Punta Mita. We're under power right now and hopefully the wind picks up in a little bit and then we'll be back in La Cruz. Tell you. Living in connection to nature. Sunrise, sunset, the wind and the tide are all things you live by on a sailboat. Living with a connection to nature is so important to our mental and physical health as humans. I'm so thankful to be out here living in rhythm with the ocean. The next heaviest thing is the mainsail, which takes me about 12 to 15 minutes to set with my outdated winch. Houdini was built in 1977, so the good news is that there are a lot of upgrades possible. And these upgrades would make single-handing much easier. Things like an electric winch. Things do break, and sometimes it gets really scary. 
But in this moment, I am soaking up this feeling of accomplishment. Javier, my autopilot, is really the only reason I can single hand at this point. What a lifesaver. Precision Sales is in the process of making me a stack pack for the main and mizzen, which will also make dousing the sails much easier. Hoisting the main really shouldn't be this difficult. I'm going to do some investigation aloft. Does anyone else have a Formosa out there? How difficult is it to raise your mainsail? some super light wind. It's a really big sail. It's a big boat. And um, it's pretty hard to get the sail up. And I know that it's easier to control the mainsail, but the mainsail has been something that's always made me nervous. So today I've pulled it up in about seven knots of wind and it's flapping a little bit, but the wind typically picks up uh, here in about an hour. So, and then it picks up to like 25 knots. So I feel good that I have the mainsail up and uh, I'm sweaty. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm just gonna kind of play with it and see if I can get uh, some more speed out of the boat. Right now I'm running the engine also because I'm charging the batteries. I still have not fixed the generator. I know it's a simple chore, that pull cord, but I just keep pulling it out or rewinding it the wrong way. I need to get onto YouTube University. <laughs> Poodle seems to be doing much better these days. I really don't know what I'd do without him. <laughs> I would be uh, probably totally talking to myself all day. It's nice having him around. I'm taking out the head sail and she looks so pretty with her sails full of wind. precision sails out and I'm sailing super happy I still have to get the mizzen sorted out I need a stack pack and uh, I need to figure out how to get up to the uh, the actual mizzen and adjust it so more work is needed but man it looks so pretty this sail feels really special today there's something today that is filling me with a sense of hope and possibility for the future. The kids are coming soon, and the boat is going to be full of life again. I'm looking to slow down during that time, and maybe find another adult to help me sail the boat while the kids are on board. Bianca is now 14, and Blake is 12. The time of them being able-bodied crew is right around the corner. The fact of the matter is that I bought the bigger boat for the kids, but they got to the age where school friends started to sound more appealing than an uninhabited island. So I found myself sailing solo, but my hope is that the glitter of land-loving life fades and they return to their salty roots soon. I sail back to the anchorage and begin the task of setting the massive hook again. I have some friends coming over later. I'm really excited. A 
another beautiful sunset. Waiting for Hana from Hana Sailing to come over. She's on Elixir with her friends and we're gonna cook dinner on Houdini, so I'm super pumped. It is a full moon and it's absolutely stunning. So this is a beautiful day of sailing solo. Oh my goodness, you guys, I pulled the hook up today in uh, 22 to 25 knots of wind solo in a pretty busy anchorage. And um, yeah, it was exhilarating. Um, <laughs> this is a heavy boat. Uh, she's 23 tons and um, the windless is great, but it can't really pull her. So I had to wait for as the bow came up for um, as it came down, I would dick, 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 pull the anchor and then it come down. It was kind of like fishing, but I was like fishing for my anchor. Um, and then I had it in uh, forward on autopilot, but not fast enough to keep control of the rudder. So it's definitely a learning curve. And, um, you know, it's so easy sometimes to just accept the wonderful and beautiful help, uh, like from Searle and from a lot of the people that have sailed with me that are stronger to do so those sorts of things for me. And, um, and now there's no one around. So I'm doing it myself and I'm I'm feeling really good about it. Now I don't know what would have happened if a fuse blew on the windlass as I had it half up or if the engine died or, you know, I fainted. <laughs> but um, yeah, none of that happened. And I am just really feeling just so grateful. And I feel proud of myself. I do. I feel proud of myself. All right, you guys. Well, we're going to go down below and uh, wait for our guests to come. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Do you guys know who this is? Probably not. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right. Hello. Hello. Hi. 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 Your bark is the worst. Hi. It's enough. Okay. Isn't it so cute? Yeah, it's, oh, it's really good. It's so, it does, it's one more. amazing. That is shocking. <laughs> we brought some. Right, and we, the captain here. Capitan. El Capitan. Thanks for having All right. Yeah, oh, welcome. So nice, this interior. I know. Cool, so I pulled this fish out probably like two, I mean, I should have done it a while ago, but. All right, we're making dinner here. Why, hello. Today we're gonna do some engine maintenance and repair. Here is the starter. It was a different color. I didn't film taking it out. I was trying to start the boat to charge the batteries. And it was like click, click, click. Wouldn't start. Um, use the old trick with a mallet on the solenoid to try to put the uh, flywheel in gear, that didn't work. And what had happened was there was some seawater spraying from the exhaust elbow onto the starter, which added some corrosion. So I took it in to a gentleman to refurbish it because it's really hard to get some parts down here in Mexico, especially for such a big engine. I have a 120 Ford Lehman. So uh, today I'm going to put this back in. I have my friend Scott over from Luna Azul here. You can see my t-shirt he gave me. Um, but usually I wear a total boat because thank you total boat. You guys are amazing. You sent me so much cool stuff to make this boat beautiful. But today we're representing for Luna as well. What am I going to say? Um, so he's going to hold the starter in place. He's going to kind of lean over the engine and I'm going to try to get back there and uh, put these three bolts on. So it's really hard to get into the engine compartment. Um, I'm hoping we don't have to drop the clothes uh, cooling, all the coolant out um, to move the pipe for me to get back there. I'm gonna wiggle in. So um, this is not a how-to video because 
I can't even get the camera back there. Anyway, let's get to work, you guys. Cause I'm going down when you're not around. Just kidding, sorry about my singing. Um, I'm in the engine compartment here. And if you can see, this is uh, the, the alternator here. And I'm gonna, right there. And I'm gonna try to wiggle in between this space. What would make the most sense is if we removed this and that so I can get back there. Um, but we're not gonna do that today because that's gonna add more work. So I'm gonna go, go gadget tiny. For those of you that are the right age, you know who go, go gadget is, comment below. <laughs> I'll be very amused. Um, so I'm gonna go, go gadget tiny and get in there and try to install this starter. I've had a lot of coffee so that I hope that I um, don't have a panic attack from being in a tiny little space and not being able to get out because no amount of butter will get me out of this space behind the engine with uh, any speed. So it's a wiggle in there kind of deal. So actually I should probably get out of the engine compartment and get some tools first. Step one tools and not a high heel and a butter knife. So word to the wise, from the wise, take pictures before you take things apart. Um, so you know where stuff goes. So we're gonna go ahead and look over our little gallery. I have got my socket set. See you guys, I do have tools. And I have a Phillips and that should get the job done with a little tenacity, patience, and um, I don't know, the, the carrot dangling of, of a nice glass of red wine at the end of the, at the, end of the job. Say a prayer for me. I've made my way to another coffee because I need another coffee like a hole in the head, but that's not gonna stop me. Should I get decaf? The answer is no. I can hear you screaming, no, don't get decaf, Aubrey. Get full caffeinated so you can get everything done today or lose your mind. Okay, I'm in. <laughs> um, I'm behind, I'm, I'm behind the engine. It's not my favorite spot. I could put a cabin down here, I think, maybe. We'll check out where the starter goes. I look like an alien. Um, <laughs> check out where the starter goes. For those of you that don't know how a starter works, which I don't think really any of you don't know, but um, there is a little wheel in here and there's a little wheel in the starter and the solenoid pops a little uh, gear out and then gets this started, cranks the engine and then Bob's your uncle. So we're gonna put these three bolts back in and then we're gonna try to figure out how we have this wired. Sorry for the lighting, you guys have to bear with me, but um, wish me luck because this sucker's heavy and that's why I brought in the muscle. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> I've made it in. There it is. All right, we've installed the starter. It wasn't that difficult. I've been procrastinating a little bit because uh, it's really heavy and I was scared for maybe the uh, possibility that the boat wouldn't start and there's something else wrong, but I don't think that's the case. So what we're gonna do is switch over to battery bank two for the starting battery and then fire in the hole. Let's see if uh, this girl started. No! <laughs> No. 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 Okay. All right. Update. <laughs> I'm going back down in the hobbit hole. So I called my dad and my dad said something really smart. He said, stop throwing parts at it and just do the simplest thing. And I'm like, well, what does that mean? He said, clean the terminals to the power source. So from the battery to the solenoid or from the solenoid to the battery, there's probably a connection because it is clicking, just not getting enough power. So I loved and hated that advice because I thought I'd just take a break and go buy some more parts. And then those probably wouldn't work, but I wouldn't be in the engine bay. But um, he said, yeah, just go down there and just clean the terminals. You know, and when you think they're clean, clean them some more. Take like an hour to do that. And I'm like, that sounds terrible, but that's what I'm gonna do. So. Fire in the hole. We took my dad's advice, which was scrub all the terminals. Didn't video it because it was boring, but now I'm gonna try again. So let's fire in the hole. Come on, Sally. Ready? Oh no, 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 damn it. Okay, I don't know what to do next. 
All right, in the world where I don't listen to my daddy, I'm gonna go get more parts. <laughs> uh, we scrubbed and scrubbed and it didn't work, so sorry, Dad. I'm gonna go buy a new solenoid. I'll be really honest right now, it's the next day. We went in for parts and then I fell into a bucket of tequila that was flavored like margarita, and then now it's tomorrow. So um, we're gonna try again. There was actually just a ground wire that was loose. Let's give it a try. Okay. All right, first we'll go to the start battery. Then, are you gonna go? Are you gonna go? <laughs> oh my gosh, that happened and now it's fixed. Thank you so much for watching and a huge thank you to my patrons. There have been even more lately. Thank you for joining me over there. I just recently added my daily vlog over on the, on the Patreon account. So I think a lot of people have been enjoying that and extended cuts are back on Vimeo. So check that out. Uh, you can check the link below sailingthislonestar.com. Thank you so much for your support and thank you so much for watching this week and I will see you next week.